Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. Today, we have a great conversation about summer learning for coaches, teachers, and school leaders with Tim, Trisha, and Ben from our YouTube series, Coaching Fundamentals. In the full podcast, we talk about all sorts of opportunities for professional growth, from formal book clubs to the power of documenting and sharing professional learning and the importance of coaching up when working with school leaders. In today's spotlight, we focus on our conversation about coaching up, and it ends with a great idea for collaborating with our instructional coaching peers to build our individual toolkits through even more great conversations. If you enjoy any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more conversations like this, please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. Remember, you can also listen to the full Coach Better episode wherever you get your podcasts. We are passionate about the impact coaching can have on student learning, school culture, and teacher professional growth, and we want to help you coach better. We've got some great opportunities for more learning after today's conversation, so stick around all the way to the end. All right, welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today we are here with many members of our original awesome team from our YouTube series, Coaching Fundamentals. And we're gonna talk about summer learning today, summer learning for ourselves as coaches and summer learning recommendations for our teachers. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves just so we know who's here. And even though I know that you know me, my name is Kim, and then I'm gonna start with Clint. Hi, you know me as well. My name is Clint, and I'm currently at the International School of Beijing. And Ben. Hello, Ben Sheridan. I'm at NIST International School in Bangkok. And Trisha. Hi, my name is Trisha. I am at uh, the United World College of Southeast Asia in Singapore. And Tim. Tim, uh, Tim Bray, and I work at Chungna Dalton School in uh, Korea. But I I guess I would say I think that's the role of coaches to sort of be that um, that elbow joint that is making sure admin are aware. Uh, again, you know, especially at, at big schools, I know that admin have so much that they need to keep eyes on. And I, I think that's something that I really enjoy doing as a coach is just making sure that they're aware of the different learning opportunities that are being developed, that people are engaging with and investing their time in. That I totally think is reasonable, that the coaches would know those things and be able to keep the school leadership informed that this is what's happening. Did you know this great thing is happening here and here's where you can see it? And being, I always, my mentality for everything is always, even if the whole rest of the school doesn't work this way, I can model what I think is best practice. So like you documenting your book club conversation using a blog, that's exactly the kind of thing that I would like spend time doing as a coach because I think it's really valuable for others to see this is how we can reflect on our learning as a team. Here's how easy it is to share it. Look how you can look back over the course of, you know, this entire book or this entire year of all these books we've read. So I think the coach being the connection between the on the ground learning and also being potentially a model for how you share and document that learning. That's a really important role that coaches can fill, especially in those larger, really busy schools where maybe it's not realistic for the school leader to just know that, but they have someone that can help them be aware. Okay. I, I, having been the director of a school, albeit a small one, and being the dean of students in the past, um, I think Rob Newberry hit the nail on the head for me once. He, he was at a conference, and he was doing a session, and apparently there was an administrator in there, and the guy's like, well, you know, I'm an administrator, and I don't really do that. And Rob's response was, you know what, that's not cute anymore. And I think, I, I hate to say it, but we've got to push back a bit on admin. Uh, and I, I'm really lucky because my team's really switched on. So I feel super lucky that way. But when I talk to other teachers and other coaches, a lot of times the upper management isn't switched on. And, and I think it is the role of the coach to give them that information. But I think it's also information that if I'm the director of the school, I want to know those things. 
I would want to know those things. Yeah, so, but knowing something and doing something are completely up, not related. <laughs> and I think, so as a coach, you can help a teacher because you're in a coaching situation and they're asking for help. Uh, you know, administrator might not be in that same, not, might not see you in that same capacity. And, you know, I wonder, like, what is the, you know, what is the PD for administrators? I mean, I don't see them at conferences. I don't see any uh, sessions aimed at administrators. <laughs> so, you know, do they do the PTC in the summer, you know, like a two-week thing or a three-week thing, and that's going to really allow them to elevate their game for the rest of the year? Uh, you know, I don't know who are they learning with. And that's the thing I don't know because I'm not a, 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 an administrator, so. But that's a good question because we've talked about summer learning for ourselves as coaches and the power of like book clubs that can connect our summer learning to our during the school year learning and how that works for teachers as well. Where, where, where is the learning going on for school leadership? Do we know? Do we have any ideas? That's a great question. Well, isn't, isn't 21st Century doing one in the end of March? Gels. They're having, they're having the Hong Kong one, but then they're having the – the gels one that's in, in Bangkok, right? So I mean, yeah, that's that's not so much PD. Uh, I guess uh, I shouldn't. It's not. It's it's more of a space where schools who are pushing the envelope can come have discussions about their journey, things they've learned, places they want to go, and sort of like share resources. So I guess in in some essence it is. But I'm talking about like strictly almost leadership focus, like how to do your job as a school leader well. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they've, I mean, it's one of those things where they've kind of got to go out of their way. I know on Twitter, there's the hashtag CP chat, just connected principles chat. And there's like 21 or 30 of these people that get together. They have a combined blog and each one of them takes responsibility for blogging every month. Um, so it exists, but I think you, you have to go out of your way to find it which probably is a problem actually. You're really right about that. Like it's, it's not something that's just there like in your face all the time, you'd have to be somebody who would know and then want to go look for it and find it. And sometimes people don't have time for that. that that's well, true. Okay. So yeah. So now this is a, sorry. I'm going to jump in because I yeah. think we, we should put the, can we put any of this back on ourselves as coaches? Because yeah. many of the conversations as part of this coach better podcast that I've been doing, the school leaders have said that one of the expectations that they have of their coaches is to coach up. So like, how can we as coaches, thinking about the kind of summer learning mentality that we're on now, how can we coach up so that we're, we have no authority, we, you know, we can't expect them to do X, Y, or Z, but how can we be coaching our leaders to be taking risks and growing the way we kind of want our teachers to do as well? Well, I think, you know, Steve Katz always had a really good saying for this. He's like, we... We don't have authority, or, res or well, we have influence. Right. And I'd like to think that through that influence, that's how you do that. Like, you use your influence and point out. Like, I, I share tons of stuff with the admin team. But like, hey, there's this great, like, leadership conference that's going on specifically for leaders. Hey, here's this article I read that's kind of like, you know, about school culture and stuff. So I do take that on. Cause I really felt when I came, that was part of what they wanted. But like I said, I was already lucky because most of them were already okay. They're, they're in that space themselves. So they're ready for that learning. I don't know what you do when it's somebody who's not ready for that learning, or maybe doesn't realize they need that learning. That's very tricky. I would argue though, that a lot of the leadership at certainly in international schools, particularly in progressive schools, I think they're quite open to, to having those conversations. I, th I think if you find a school leader who is very closed about their own learning and growing, they are not going to be a school leader for very long, especially in this day and age. Um, I, th I think you might kind of have that, that stereotypical old boys network, you know, and they're going to keep going just because they're on that track. But I think it's so competitive and so many, so many leaders are, are up and coming and are looking at how they can distinguish themselves from everyone else for whatever reason, whether it's because, you know, they really value learning, which I'm sure they all do, but they're also thinking about how am I going to get myself that edge for that next position or whatever that looks like. I think your school leaders, they do want that and they are amenable to that. And like Kim said, I think 
listening to, to school leaders talk, they are open to having these conversations. It's not like a classroom teacher. I think they're, a lot of times their priorities have to constantly shift. Um, so they, they can't maybe have that standing uh, coaching time. But I know that, you know, I have a weekly meeting with our middle school principal. I have a fortnightly meeting with our high school principal. Um, you know, I can meet with our elementary school principal as and when needed. And it, they are open to these suggestions. And it's not just about, like, administrative running of the school stuff. I think there's also other questions about how are we pushing professional learning for the school or how are we pushing a professional learning culture across the school. And they, they're really open to those conversations. So it, it's how do you kind of position yourself to feel comfortable having those conversations with your leadership team or how do you um, maybe even just crack the ice initially? Because I think once you, you, you break the ice, you know, it's all, it's on. Yeah, I, I think there's a big difference between coming in and seeing yourself as a partner in learning with school leadership versus mm -hmm. seeing them as like your boss. And I think that comes a lot with experience of being in the role in so many different places because yeah. lots of the new coaches that I work with that I've said this a million times before, their first question is, but no one told me what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's never going to like <laughs> that's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so like going in like, okay, I'm, I'm your partner. I want to, I want to help you achieve your goals. Here are the things that I feel like I am really passionate about. I'm really strong in, and I can, I can help you with here are areas where, you know, I've noticed we as a school have an opportunity to grow. And I think a lot of it is about the way, just like you're saying, Clint, the way that you approach that conversation, we are partners in school improvement. Yeah. I'm not waiting for you to tell me what to do. And I'm just like, you know, sitting. yeah. And I think it's also like not coming in with the, you know, the whole coaching versus consultant thing. It's like, I'm not here to give you answers. I'm here to help you find the answer because you already have it. I'm just going to help mediate your thinking, I think. So Absolutely. I think, I think, <laughs> amen. Can I get an amen? <laughs> um, but I think uh, like what you said, what a lot of people have been saying though is, you know, coaches are sort of this in between. So we understand the intention of things that administrators do. And we also understand the realities of the, or the effects of whatever it is that happens. So to have that honest conversation going back and saying, you know, this was our intention. This is what we tried to do. This is what's happening. And so we may need to course correct. And it's not like anybody did anything wrong. It's like we started trying to do this with the best of intentions and we still have good intentions. But the reality is, you know, we couldn't have understood ex everything that was going to happen. There's too many variables. So now we're going to adjust based on the reality of what's happening. But I think that, that takes a lot of transparency and openness and sort of sometimes, you know, people might want to, you know, quick to point fingers and sort of lay blame when things don't go as, you know, planned or whatever. But I think it's sort of a mindset, you know, like, yeah, we're going to try this and then we're going to adjust as we go. You're actually making me think about how we could take this right back to the original conversation, which was summer learning. And I'm thinking about, I don't know about any of you, but I tend to, you know, remember when things don't go as well as they could have. And it's, you're making me wonder that if as coaches, we set an, a, a summer goal, let's say, of working with leadership, just as an example, and even giving yourself the time to almost reimagine how scenarios could have gone so that you have like those things right at your fingertips because likely some kind of conversation with the finger pointing is going to happen again and you know like how would you handle that differently and almost Maggie has talked before about like transcribing conversations and then writing down what she would have said and we've talked about videoing conversations it's making me think that summer learning for us as coaches if especially if we're thinking about coaching up we can think about document specific times in our experience over the course of the year where things maybe haven't gone according to plan and then take that summertime to actually map out this is what I could do when something like this happens again instead of you know dwelling on the negative <laughs> turn it into a positive sure I, I think another I, I feel like your approach is is a great one and the one that I'm going to suggest is exactly the opposite but that's oh, no. <laughs> But I, I also just think summer is a wonderful time to say, 
let go of that stuff that you quite possibly could have taken the wrong way or a conversation that irked you, drop it, hit reset when you go into the next school year because, you know, I've been guilty of doing this. I know a lot of us have where we feel like, oh, that person, that interaction was X. Therefore, all future interactions will be just like that. When that's not the reality, I think so often we do misinterpret where that person was having a bad day, um, you know, a million reasons. And I think as coaches, if you can just hit that reset button with relationships that maybe aren't going the way that you want them to, or that person is resistant to change or isn't coming to any of your sessions or doesn't want to meet with you. I think if it's just, you know, that continual, let me give them another chance. Forget about the past is um, I have found also just to be really, really important. And just to be clear, I wasn't thinking about that. Like, Oh, I'm never going to go back to that person again. That sucked. I hated that. And I'm going to ruminate on it all summer about how everything went wrong. More about like, can I use an opportunity to turn something that maybe didn't go so well into something that could go successfully in the future? For me, every time something doesn't work, I always try to think about how would I handle that differently next time. But I, I'm not disagreeing about hitting the reset. I definitely think that, that the next time happens because you hit the reset. Because you said, oh, that was a terrible conversation. I don't want to have a conversation like that again. I'm going to reset and go back into it with positive assumptions. But maybe next time, I'm not going to react in this way that I reacted and try something approach, so another approach. If you've enjoyed any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more great conversations about coaching with inspiring educators from around the world, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. To hear the full length conversation, subscribe to the Coach Better podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're looking for even more resources to help you coach better, head over to adurolearning.com slash coach better to explore over 20 online courses designed by coaches for coaches. Catch us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Aduro Learning to connect with us. See you next week on Coach Better Spotlight.